Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining in. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline. And as you can tell, it is early in the morning. I've got the crazy hair going on. I still have a little bit of getting ready to do to get out the door. I do my shipping in the morning quite early, so some days I am really running, setting the pace. But today we are getting on the road uh, to two different Goodwills, one Shillington and one Lancaster, my normal place to thrift. Normal meaning two to three days a week mostly two days a week. Now, as I've shared in past videos, Goodwill prices are getting a little crazy, but I am still on it. I am still hunting for really good items to flip for a profit. But today we are on the road. I'm bringing you along with me. Hopefully I'll find something interesting to film for you. So it's not the same old, same old. Sometimes this game gets a little tired and I really have to press in to find things that I wanna share with you guys. All right, hit that like and subscribe button if you will really helps my channel. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much to everyone who has been following me, commenting, helping me, correcting me. I appreciate it all. All right, let's get on the road. Let's see what we can find to sell on eBay. So I quickly grabbed a card and right away found this item. Now I knew this was brass, and I wasn't quite sure what it was, so I put it in the cart, and as you can see, I already picked up a piece of clothing. I feel today is gonna to be a good day. Here is part of a nativity scene. Wasn't sure if that was glue or some styrofoam pellets. And I'm starting to look at this considering it. So as I always mention, the first thing that I do is look at how it is painted. And as you can see, it was only a partial set. So now my mind is saying, okay, should I get separate pieces or pieces and sell them separately? So I do take the lamb, the ox or the cow, and the baby Jesus. But as I'm reaching for the baby Jesus, I notice the overage of paint and the way this is painted. This is a shame. To put all of the work into, you know, producing a nativity and then having it so poorly painted, I grab the other two pieces out of my cart and put them back. How an item is painted, especially a nativity, is huge in my world. Any kind of statuary figurines, I'm judging by how it's painted. I turn around and see this frosted pink bowl, $1.99. I didn't think it was really that special and a lot of that glassware does not bring a high return. So I don't pick up much depression glass, frosted glass, maybe a mistake on my part, but I'm just not seeing the value in the majority of it. Here I was sliding this out because this was a three piece set, kind of creates a scene or a vignette and I didn't care for the way it was painted. Kind of over shipping artwork, as I always say. Now I do have quite a bit of artwork still in my store. It does sell, but slow. Okay, the famous plastic fruit. Those were cheaply made. We want good fruit. We want like high quality, really realistic fruit. I have sold plastic fruit for close to $100, yep. Okay, here's one of those lane boxes. Some people say these are salesman samples and some people say they were graduation gifts given by Lane Chest Company for girls graduating. I think the high schools would purchase them for the graduating class. I'm not sure if the boys got them. So leave a comment down below if you remember your high school giving out those boxes. Now I realized the turkey leg was broken, but thrift store time is also my learning time. So when I'm in the thrift store, I pick up as many items as I can that I haven't seen before, or that I just feel I can learn something from. I'm not quite sure who would wanna hang a turkey on their wall, but there it is. Okay, again, I realized these were cheaply made, but I had never seen this before. The fork was broken, so I was just taking a look. On the bottom shelf, I come across this large bolt or spool of this tassel trim, upholstery tassel trim, $19.99. That is the highest I've ever seen. I have picked up this type of trim countless times and sold it by the yard or by the whole amount, depending on how big it was. 
it did bring very good money and I might have a little bit left in my store, but I have sold hundreds of yards of that kind of tassel trim. Here's one of the carts that the workers roll out. These carts are attacked by all of us, including me, because this is new inventory coming out on the floor. And here I'm just going through the items on the top shelf. 99% of the sellers in this store are really respectful of each other and we are all friends. A few people are a little grabby, but that's just what it is. When I find something that somebody else was looking at or, you know, grabbing for themselves and there were multiple pieces, I do try to be considerate and offer them the one that I have taken. Now, if it's like gold or diamonds, <laughs> I won't be offering it, but the majority of items we all share with each other especially if it's part to a set of pieces that you're picking up. Here's a vase, very odd. I think this is really um, maybe a person that hasn't done a lot of pottery. It had a hole in it, so I'm not quite sure how the water would stay in. Here I'm just taking a look at a little photo frame. I thought that was cute, $3 and it's Sonoma, so I don't pick it up. Also looking at a little pitcher and dish, ceramic. Next, I'm noticing this candle. Now, it did have some damage, a few places dented in. I have sold large candles of this design for very good money. I wasn't feeling this one because of it being misshapen. So I do put that back, but if you see candles that are large in that kind of stained glass print, you wanna run a comp on those. There are people that look for that type of candle. I have to say that after eight years, almost going on nine of being in the thrift stores, I still love thrifting. I could probably thrift five or six days a week. And I think we all love thrifting, but if you are one of those resellers that are really trying to sell items, I encourage you, if you are not listing as much as you're picking up, you really wanna to try to set a certain amount of items as a goal for yourself for the day. Like, okay, today I'm gonna to list five items before I go thrifting. That way our houses don't look like Goodwill. Here I'm looking at a Star Wars Lego children's carry-on piece of luggage. That might have been a mistake not to pick it up, but I felt like that was probably commonly produced. I could be wrong about that. I'd like to give a shout out to all the workers in this store. These employees work so hard. So shout out to you guys, great job. These glasses caught my attention because I am dying to find fire and light glass. So anytime I see glass that looks recycled, see this ripply look, I'm always looking for the mark fire and light. I don't know if fire and light glass is all marked, if every piece is marked, I'm thinking it is. I did like these glasses, but I wanted them to be marked. Now, would they have sold? These might have sold. Here I'm seeing two more on the bottom shelf. So, of course, <laughs> type A personality that I am. We have to have them all lined up together. They have to be with their friends. I didn't want somebody who was buying the set to miss out that there were two extra. And I'm seeing another one there, which I wind up not putting with the others. I didn't see it till after I had filmed. Okay, this would not bring any kind of money, but look how cute this is. I'm very jealous for people that have that kind of time in their lives to create cute little owl, owl decor out of, what are those, hickory nuts? Okay, a blueberry sugar and creamer. And I was trying to read what that said, but I didn't feel that this was any kind of, I don't know, quality. It was a piece that didn't match. Most times sugar and creamers do not go really quick in my store. I sit on them for quite a while, which is not horrible, but I want something to bring good money if I'm gonna sit on it for more than a year. Yep, I sit on my items, sometimes two years. I've sat on items for three years, but then the item sells and you know, the profit, the margin is terrific. So I have no problem with that. <laughs> it's the crazy mask. As you can see in my cart, 
I do have quite a bit that I grab when I see it and the camera is not on, but I will do a trunk haul after this part of the video for you guys so you can see what I actually picked up. A little stack of oriental plates. I always turn it over like I'm going to be able to read Chinese. <laughs> After all these times of looking at Asian marks on the bottom of plates, my mind wants to think it can understand what that's saying. Like, oh, it's that brand. Here I'm seeing this beautiful crucifix. I was hoping for a made in Italy stamp or mark. It was not marked. I had to look one more time. I didn't like the way the cross had the screw so um, crudely done. The World Whiskey Challenge. I do not want to participate in that. Here are little gift boxes, empty, 99 cents a piece. You can order those on Amazon for about six cents a piece. Okay, there was something about this that I thought was a little sweet. I'm getting old. And I do take a look at it heavy, and I don't think that, you know, the general public is going to want something like that. That's going to be a real specific buyer. Here are some faux books for a library shelf. In my opinion, we should just get real books and put them on the shelf, whether we read them or not. But I guess it's fun to be able to hide something inside the books. I had no plans on buying this. I am showing this to show you guys the overage of spray paint. I'm thinking that happened in the factory. Okay, Christmas is in full swing. We are in August and the thrift store is just inundated with Christmas and we still have Halloween out. It's like a big holiday festival going on in Goodwill. I have to say I don't pick up a lot of Christmas items. I look for vintage, pretty much vintage or something really well made that was done by hand, you know, that a craftsman made. Those are the two niches within Christmas that I look for. And vintage is always a big seller. Blow molds are probably my number one thing to look for. I do pick up the ceramic Christmas trees we all know about with the little light up um, I'm going to call them light bright bulbs, but on a general rule, I've even stopped picking those up unless they're the rare white ones, because those are such a thing to pack and ship. Now, if it was something that was going to bring $200 or over, I would pick it up. But even if I found one that would bring a solid 50 or 60, I probably would leave it on the shelf for somebody else. This box of carolers caught my attention. There are a few famous brands that put this type of item out. Look at this man's mustache, too funny. And the box is unmarked, so I leave it behind. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to do this. The parking lot is quite crowded, as you can see. This is the Goodwill Route 30 that we're usually at, and I'm gonna eat a quick lunch and go on to Shillington. So let's take a look at what we got good old trunk haul. So I've got my box set up. This is usually the routine. I have a rug spread out. The first stop is this Nantucket basket. Now it does need a little bit of work. The leather strapping is coming undone, but I still think this is good. I love this little clasp here. How special is that? I recently saw this on somebody's Instagram haul and I got it for $3.99. I would have picked this up anyway because I love basket purses. So in the box it goes. Next stop is a pair of men's shoes that still have the stretcher trees in. These are L.L. Bean and I believe these are vintage. They're in gorgeous shape with Vibram soles. Vibram is the name to look for in soles of shoes and I paid $7.47 for those. 
These two white boxes, I'm not gonna be able to undo with one hand, but these are little angel ornaments and they seem to be vintage, I'm not quite sure. I will try to include photos of them here on the screen so that you can see what they look like and I paid $3 a piece. Next up is a Fontanini set of ornaments. These are glass bells and they have the little Fontanini angels in them. I'm very excited about this find. $3.99. I will probably keep these together and sell it as a set. I won't separate something like this because of the gift box that it's in. Here is a set of Narnia, the Chronicles of Narnia books. Now these don't bring an especially high price. I'm going to guess like 2022. I did not, truthfully, I did not check the quality of what shape they're in. I'm hoping they're good. This is C.S. Lewis. And what did I pay for these? $3.99. I'm thinking $19.99. Lots of clothing. I was thrilled to find Allegria. This is Allegria here. Now these aren't in new condition or brand new. They do have a few issues with them. You can see a little bit of peeling there. So I'm going to have to judge what I'm going to get for these. And I paid $7.47, but Allegria does well for me. So I try to pick them up when I find them. Okay, lots of clothing. So nothing really of note. Although there is one coat that another reseller put back that if you look up the brand, it doesn't seem to be a great brand, but look at this brocade. Do we love this? Yes, we do. I love coats like this. So it is just a woman's trench style coat with beautiful brocade tapestry and embroidery. This is the tag Indica and it was 10.25. So I did go back and forth for a while and I decided to get it and take a chance. So that is that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna price this at. I'm thinking 30 to 35, maybe a little bit higher. Just a pair of men's shorts. I got lots of golf clothing today. A leather belt, 2.99 and really nice tooled leather. It has a scene on it with horses, so I'm gonna call it Southwestern or Western Belt. Okay, this bag I was excited for. So this is a tennis backpack and has branding all over. You can see all of the branding. And I paid $3.99 for it. It's in fairly good shape. So I expect to get probably $30, $35 for that. A little Star Wars, you know, I'm hoping it's new. It seems to be new. $5. This used to be $1.99, but I'll take a chance. Legos are always, you know, in demand. And we are coming into the Christmas season soon, so I figured that was, you know, a good deal. More clothing. Most of this is golf clothing or men's, um, you know, polos, things like that. All the normal Nike Under Armour brands. I did pay up for a few of these pieces. This piece, $7, but this is a jacket, so that was okay. The polo shirts, I'm paying $7, so I'm going to rethink that. I'm going to start to really look at my numbers hard and see if I'm going to continue on at that price point. If not, I will just drop carrying those. A pair of Crocs flip-flops, women's flip-flops, $7.47. Here's a beautiful vase, and I think this is Burlwood, B-U-R-L, and I paid $1.99. More clothing, lots of clothing today, and this is only store number one, so I expect to fill the back of the Jeep. And a beaded belt which I don't know, I went back and forth, but look at the beading on this. How beautiful is that? Put it out for you guys. So I said yes to that, $1.99. And this brass thing that I'm not quite sure what it is. So this opens up and there are some nails in it. So I'm thinking this is either an ashtray and you rest your cigarette here. I don't think so though. I don't know. Leave a comment down below if you guys know what this is. So it hangs, I thought it was a clock and it's definitely brass, definitely cloisonne, definitely vintage and that's all I got. All right, and last are some dresser or these are probably cabinet handles. 
so I paid $2.99 for them. All right, guys, so hopefully I'll be able to film in store number two and see what we get there. All right, guys, so I am just hand holding my phone. That was trunk haul number one. I am just gonna grab a quick lunch at Panera and drive on over to Shillington Goodwill. I've been to this Goodwill a few times and it seems to be good when you get there early in the morning and I won't be there early in the morning so I'll see what I can find but I'm gonna bring you guys with me and we'll look at things together all right hit that like and subscribe button let's get going let's see what Shillington has okay this is a very odd sensation look what's coming up <laughs> this is so strange it just feels like you're driving by buildings that are driving <laughs> that can't be safe. Those look like they're about to fall off that truck any moment. Ah, oh. <laughs> crazy. Oh my goodness. Crazy life in Pennsylvania. The trucks that have things on them that are just, I don't know. Look at that guy. He's going off the road with buildings on his truck. Let's see if I can get a better shot of this while I'm driving. I am not looking at the camera at all, so it's probably not centered. Okay, so that is four sheds on a flatbed truck, like weaving all over the place. And when you drive by it, it's like a weird sensation. Did you ever have that sensation when you're at a traffic light and you've got your foot on the brake, but the guy next to you is going backwards so you think you're going forwards? Does that ever happen to you? So you press the brake even further down and you're wondering why like you're moving, but you're really not moving. This is kind of that sensation. Like you're driving by buildings that are driving. So weird. Look at those things shake. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That guy is a crazy driver. All right, just figured I would share that. So as you can see, we're starting with hard goods at the Shillington location. Copper items always attract my attention. I do look for solid copper and things that have a really nice shape, round bowls, very organic shapes. Here I found this set of plates. These were beautiful. Of course, the sticker is right over the maker's mark. I really didn't want to peel stickers <laughs> off of all those plates. When I got home, I wish they could somehow just collectively put one price. I did see a gentleman pick those plates up and put them in his cart, so I was really glad for that. Those were beautiful. This Shillington location gets really crowded. This store has a lot of shoppers. That deviled egg plate fooled me. I thought that was ceramic and it was plastic. I don't know the amount of resellers that shop at this store. I imagine it's quite high. I know the Lancaster location. We have a lot of resellers, which does make it a little competitive, but it makes it great fun. Lots of friends, you know me, I'm all about that. I love the social aspect of this business. I think if I worked in a regular office building, I don't know, unless it was really big and they had social events, if I was just sitting at one desk all day, I think it would drive me crazy. I love being out and about, meeting people, seeing what they're finding, and we all talk about our sales. I think the Shillington location is a lot cleaner and a lot more organized than the Lancaster location that I go to. The Lancaster location has really gotten into the habit of putting a lot of garbage items on the shelf. Items that nobody would want. I mean, pure garbage. Here at Shillington, it's a little more curated, which I do appreciate because you don't have to wade through so many piles of things that nobody's going to buy. I mean, they put out like, this is Lancaster, empty boxes from food or things. There's no item in it. Here I'm zeroing in on a tart pan from False Graph. I do not pick up any False Graph. I do have to run a comp soon to see if there are false graph pieces that bring high money, but for now, it's kind of like a general rule. Decorative plates. We always talk about decorative plates. These are Norman Rockwell. I do not pick these up, but sometimes they catch my attention. I like to see what 
you know, prints they have. I guess it was really a thing in the day because there are just so many of these plates in the thrift store. I don't think I ever go to a thrift store where I don't find Norman Rockwell printed plates. I mean, who would want that hanging on their wall? I'm sorry if you have those on your wall. I just don't get it. This was Knowles. So a little bit different. We kiss in a shadow. I'm not quite sure. That must be some sort of story. I got nothing. Okay, so I went through this just to show them to you guys, but I had no plan on buying them. Here's a Henkel's knife block. Knife blocks were quite the thing for a while, and I did pick up quite a few and sell quite a few wood knife blocks. I no longer do that. USPS, the Postal Service, um, they're raising their rates again. I feel like we've had like 10 raises in the past three years, probably even more. So more and more, we're going to have a hard time selling heavier items through USPS. So that is my main way to ship because they come right to my house. I do not have time to drive to locations for UPS or FedEx. The locations, even in, you know, the alternate locations are not near my house. So I realized that Walgreens and a few other places, Dollar General, do take those items for shipping, but I don't have those places by me. I do scan games. I don't sell a lot of games. I don't know what I'm looking for. So I try to look for things that look a little bit unusual. Here is a leather craft workshop, and that had my attention, but at $9.99 for an open craft box, no, I wouldn't even take the time to go through it for $10. The weight on that, by the time the buyer paid, I don't know that there would be any profit in that. But see how organized this is? Great job, Shellington, <laughs> even though I didn't find much this day. Wits and Wagers, party edition. We always like the party edition. And I didn't run a comp. And we are onto the blue aisle. Again, I think I have a theme going on looking at plates that I will not pick up. Even before I, I pick those up to look at, I know I'm not gonna purchase those. But I wanna know everything about everything. I see quite a few of these round bowls. I think this is maybe a decoupage technique where some sort of printed paper is put on the inside and it's somehow melted on there. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Okay, dolphins, very cheaply made cloisonne style. This is not cloisonne. Cloisonne is where they take a gold wire and the wire is melted onto the piece. Beautiful. That was not true cloisonne but I took a look at it anyway. Clear glass as far as the eye can see. Now just know I did make myself go up and down the clear glass aisle. I try to discipline myself instead of just turning away. I did look at quite a few pieces of the clear glass to see if I could find a mark on them. Lately, I've been on a candle kick, buying lots of Yankee candles. I think it's my way of nesting as autumn approaches. That's what I do. I bring out throw blankets and light candles. That's the extent of it. $3.99. I did like this tray. Very heavy, but I thought it was pretty. So as you can see, I am not finding a lot. And spoiler alert. <laughs> I did not pick up very much in this store at all. I think I got two or three pieces, which I will try to show at the end. I might have caught those pieces on film, so I'll show it to you right in this footage. Here I decide to look in the case. There I am looking in the case. I liked that tooled leather bag, $10. That might have been a mistake not to pick it up. As you can tell in the mirror, I'm wearing stretchy clothes, always stretchy clothes in the thrift store. That's my number one tip because it is a workout thrifting. 
So if you are looking to start a new workout routine, go thrifting and look at the bottom shelf. I guess this is the green aisle, little piece of pottery. We see a lot of this Tuscany style, heavy stoneware uh, kitchen stuff and I don't pick that up. Oh, I missed a bag of fruit. Did you see it guys? That might have been beaded fruit. I love beaded fruit. The vintage beaded fruit, okay, I'll stop, is just spectacular. Here I'm taking a look at clothing. Brooks Brothers, this is Golden Fleece. I was not going to pick this up, but I wanted to really show this to you. This is Brooks Brothers' um, signature emblem logo. Golden Fleece, it's called. It is a sheep hanging by a something. <laughs> How's that for knowledge? I was probably in this store, I'm going to say for about an hour and a half, and the amount of resellers that were men looking through the polos, the t-shirts, the jerseys, that was quite high. I must have seen in the hour and a half, maybe five or six different shoppers looking through these items. This was well picked over. So I am moving on. Here I'm giving you a span, a very shaky span of what the store looks like. Big store, very clean, well organized, high prices. Here is the first piece I picked up. This is Selection, Ula Popkin. I like Ula Popkin. It doesn't do as well as it used to for me, but I really liked this. Here I'm showing $4.99. Beautiful print, beautiful flow and feel to the material. So I do put that in my cart. I decided to go up and down the aisles a little bit and see if my eye could pick anything that might be of interest. The majority of times, this is how I'm sourcing for clothing. Now, I probably miss a few pieces, so I'm going to have that disclaimer. I will not catch as much as if you go piece by piece because some good labels will have plainer clothing that you won't pick up on. But you can see there's tens of thousands of items, if not hundreds of thousands. I don't have that kind of time. I don't know who would to go through each individual piece in the store. So my best advice, if you're limited on time, if you have young children at home, you're trying to do this part time, or even if you're a full time person, is to try to train your eye to pick out what pieces might be something good. It does take time to learn this, but this is invaluable to me. So I kind of stand back and let my eye take a look at interesting prints is probably mostly what is catching my eye or better material. So my eye can spot, of course, wool, cashmere, silk. I thought this blast was pretty. I'm not quite sure why I didn't take a closer look at that first one. Vintage clothing has gained more popularity as time has gone on, so I definitely look at vintage items. I liked this Aztec print, but the brand was not great. Look how cute this little Levi's jean jacket is. $5.50, I thought that was good. This is a children's, they put it in with women's. That might have been a mistake because I don't know children's clothing uh, and I wasn't taking time to run comps. Now many days I'm running comps all day long. Like the Goodwill Lancaster that we were in before this store here, I was running a lot of comps. But by the time I got here and it's later in the day, um, this chap's vest, I'm, I'm looking at this now, I should have picked that up. Chaps is not a big mover, uh, you know, fast seller for me, but that was a good print. I think I would have done well. I think it was the culmination that it was a vest. I think if it was a long sleeve sweater, I would have grabbed that. I look for 1980s sweaters, meaning pastels. Have you ever seen the sweaters with like big bunnies or something like that? I always look for those. So I guess my eye, <laughs> that's a crazy sweater. My eye does go towards color more so than neutrals or darks. I was just Rude 21, but pretty colorway. In years 
gone by, I used to see great, vast quantities of Christmas sweaters. The past couple of years, I have not seen them. I don't know if Goodwill and Savers uh, Value Village are sending their sweaters to their online stores, the Christmas sweaters, or if they're just selling out quickly. Sweater brands that I like to find, I like Sleeping on Snow, which is an anthropology brand. I like the vintage sweaters, cashmere sweaters, sweater coats are always good, wrap sweaters that are cardigans are good. Um, mohair can bring very good money, alpaca. If you find a 100% alpaca sweater, that's almost always a yes for me. I don't care what the brand is, if it's in good condition. People love alpaca and baby alpaca even more. Very hard to find though. Okay, somehow I'm back in the men's section. <laughs> I am just all over the place as usual. I am a girl on the move in these stores. Men's jackets. I think a lot of times I'm looking for golf jackets, jackets that men bring along with them for whatever sport they're doing. So I do look for those. Here I'm finding the second find of the day, the second purchase of the day in this store. This is a beautiful multi-tier denim skirt, $4.50, love that price, Venzia. I think that I'm saying that right. Correct me in the, in the comments down below if I'm saying Venzia wrong. I really like this peasant boho maxi. The denim part is stretched, very nice. 450 yes 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 all day long put that in the cart this chintz flower skirt was handmade boy is that like 80s 90s kind of looked more like linens material rather than a print for clothing Okay, so Shillington was not really worth the drive, probably 45 minutes from my house, but you have to check. That's just part of this game. Here I'm going to insert two photos of the items that I did find. I'm not going to bother with the trunk haul. The Ula Popkin tunic blouse, beautiful print, and I think that'll do well. And also the Venzia, I'm probably saying that wrong, skirt. So those are the only two items I found and thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours.